Hey guys, Rock here with another World of Warplanes video. This time we're going to be doing a guide and review of the Fisher XP-75 Eagle, which has been described somewhat generously in historical publications as a group of parts flying in formation, loosely. The original spec called for a fast-climbing high-altitude interceptor that could also be capable of long-range escort duties. And historically, it was kind of a basket case of an airplane. If the goal was to make the plane as cheaply as possible, as quickly as possible, by using off-the-shelf components of other planes, including the undercarriage of a Corsair, the tail section of an SBD Dauntless dive bomber, wings from a P-51 Mustang, which was later changed to a P-40 wings. Even its engine was essentially two Allison V-12 engines mounted side by side in the W configuration, uh, mounted in the middle of the fuselage behind the cockpit, driving a two contra-rotating propellers through a long drive shaft. And all of this was to be assembled by Fisher Auto Body, which was a division of General Motors. All of this sounds like a good idea, right? Historically, it just didn't really work out right. It, there were a lot of delays in development, and by the time it was ready to enter production, its capability had basically been surpassed by newer models of the P-47 and the P-51 and the program was ultimately cancelled. And uh, I don't know, one caption I found while researching it said that uh, the P-75 may have looked like a bad airplane, but don't be fooled, it was a bad airplane. In game it's pretty cool though. It actually has a tremendous climb and dive speeds because of its large engine and twin propellers, but its altitude performance is fairly average and it limits the ability to take advantage of these characteristics. It has pretty good maneuverability for a heavy fighter. It can kind of be categorized almost like a medium fighter. It has very good close-in firepower with 10 50 cal machine guns, four in the nose and six in the wings. It doesn't have the long-range knockdown ability of cannons, but it does great damage, and it has a very, very long overheat time of about 18 seconds. Its optimum altitude range also extends clear down to the deck, which can be handy when you're trying to escape, because you can dive down into a pretty low altitude and use your dive speed and then be in your optimum so you can evade fairly easily. As far as loadout, it is a premium aircraft, so there's not much you can do to change the modules except for adding bombs, which usually isn't a good idea. The bombs tend to be a distraction, and they tend to put you in the wrong place at the wrong time, doing the wrong sort of things where you should be doing to really take advantage of this aircraft, so I don't recommend the bombs. There are no restrictions anymore on the type of pilots you can put in premium planes, so you can put in a plane you are trying to, a pilot you're trying to train for another plane, or if you prefer, you can just put in your best American pilot and max the aircraft's capabilities out. Uh, as far as ammunition, standard is okay, premium is better, obviously. I usually run it with API on the full caliber mounted guns, just for maximum damage on the most accurate guns. And then I run incendiary on the wing guns, just to save a little money. Uh, don't worry about the cost of the ammunition, though, as long as you get in some damage, it pays for itself pretty easily. As far as a play guide, overall you want to use the speed and firepower to your advantage. Climb at the beginning of the battle, and don't get real high because your optimum altitude is only about 1800 meters. Ideally, once the battle engagement begins, you're going to want to pull people downward where your flight characteristics are within their optimums. Ideally, also you can kind of come in in the second wave after the dog pile has already kind of begun to descend some. Avoid head-to-head -head collisions, head-to-head -head engagements rather, with heavy fighters or cannon-armed fighters even for that matter you don't have the same firepower at range and you will give up a lot of hit points before you're really doing much damage so it won't be a good trade. If machine gun armed fighters want to come head to head with you, fine. Everything else you need to get, get out of the way and get around on them where you can use your guns to your advantage. Uh, for the most part you want to wait until you pretty much see the whites of their eyes to begin engaging with the machine guns. It's a close order, at best as a close order knife fighter. The tremendous machine gun fire uh, output, the tracers tend to alert the enemy that they're being engaged. And so ideally you can wait until they're pretty close in before you hit the trigger so you don't tip them off and allow them to evade. 
However, because you do have four cowling mounted machine guns that have less dispersion, and just because this thing has such a tremendous output of fire, you can still get a few hits at range if you need to clear a friendly's tail, or if you just need to finish a kill and get the last few hit points off of them. So keep that in mind. You can still do a little bit of damage even before your reticle fully lights up all the way. And overall, while the XP-75 is very fast, it's also fairly maneuverable for a heavy fighter. So you can still use your maneuver, and especially your roll rate, to your advantage to try to get around on the tail of a big knee who's trying to shoot you. Use your roll rate and your climb and dive speed to escape when needed and to uh, move in to close a kill. And it has a good roll rate and a good speed and a good climb and good dive speed, especially if you have some boost remaining, so keep that in mind. Here we are in Eastern Front. We're just uh, midway through our second battle I'm showing here. We're just picking off, getting some damage here. We're closing in on this Hornet. This should be a pretty easy kill. I can get right in on him and then wait until I'm pretty close to engage. And then as he's turning by me, I'm just pouring machine gun fire on him. And look, I took off about two thirds of his hit points there pretty easily. And he's not going to be able to maneuver away from me very well. I'm re-engaging here beyond the optimum. See, I'm still pulling some damage off him, although my teammate does finish the kill there. And here we have this P-51 who's on the tail of a friendly here, so I'm going to try to help him out and clear him off. And I wasn't able to get a kill there, but I sure did get in. We got a Pretty good bit of damage in there. And he's still stuck on, so I'm going to come around again for another pass. And that was a mistake to ignore me. If you get an XP-75 on your tail, you need to worry, because if it gets in close, it's just going to take away all of your hit points. At this point in the battle, there's nothing left but the three attack aircraft. And although it doesn't have the same knockdown power range, it can still take a lot of hit points, even off the ILs, with just this tremendous volume of 50 cal fire. These two here are already both pretty weak. Get in, finish him off. If nothing else, I'm taking his gun out of the fight, and especially his tail gunner out of the fight, which can be kind of a problem. The XP-75 is fairly lightly armored, so you still need to really watch out for the tail gunners of those IL-8s and IL-10s. Look at that, just hundreds of hit points just peeling off of them. And although I got a lot of damage in, my teammate didn't get that kill again. This probably would have been an ace match if I managed to finish a couple of those. And so anyway guys, there you have it. That's the XP-75. That's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Good hunting. See you next time.